Mission Space is the space simulator attraction at Epcot. While Disney is not known for building ultra-intense thrill rides, Mission Space is a different animal. This is the most intense ride Walt Disney World, and it certainly isn't for everyone. Find out why in this review. Horizons was one of the oldest rides at Epcot. This Omnimover style dark ride opened back in 1983, and it took guests on a tour of the future. While this ride had a cult following, it started operating sporadically in the mid-1990s, and it permanently closed during the 1999 season. The entire pavilion was demolished, and one year later in 2000, the ride's replacement was announced. Epcot would add Mission Space, which was advertised as a one-of-a-kind astronaut-like experience. Disney had always wanted a space pavilion at this park, and it finally became a reality. The ride would be located on the site of the former Horizons in an all-new building. And this building looks fantastic. I think it's the best looking pavilion at Epcot. I love the swirly architecture with the giant planets out front. Mission Space would open in 2003, but it has had a bit of a rocky history. The rise estimated to have cost Disney $100 million, making it one of the most expensive amusement rides ever. Disney engaged in a legal battle with Environmental Tectonics, the company who supplied the simulator hardware, and it was over the ride's price, and it wouldn't be settled until 2009. Mission Space's ride system is a series of motion simulators attached to a centrifuge to simulate a voyage to outer space. Guests stare at a computer screen during the ride, which disguises the centrifuge's motion. The centrifuge rapidly spins to induce positive Gs in riders throughout the ride. All four centrifuges originally operated in this manner, since you cannot see the ride in action prior to experiencing it. Many guests didn't realize just how fast this ride spins. This has caused issues for many riders. It's exceedingly easy to come off this ride dizzy, especially if you ignore the warnings to keep your head back and always look forwards. Further complicating matters is that you need to keep looking forwards, even if you start to feel nauseous. Otherwise, the effects can worsen. There's a reason this ride comes with barf bags. If you suffer from motion sickness, you should avoid this ride at all costs. I can go absolutely nuts on a teacup ride, but even Mission Space can make me start to feel fuzzy. The spinning and forces on this ride are no joke. But the ride has also caused more severe issues. Two riders with pre-existing conditions have unfortunately died over the years after experiencing Mission Space. All these issues are why Disney modified the attraction in 2006. Disney split the ride experience into two modes. Orange mode, or more intense training, would still experience the centrifuge. Green mode, or less intense training, disabled the spinning of the centrifuge. This turned the ride into a more traditional simulator, and lessened the likelihood of people getting ill. Green also had a 4-inch lower height requirement than orange, further emphasizing its tamer nature. Staff members stationed by the ride's entrance actively warned guests about oranges spinning, and in the past, they even gave out info cards. They encouraged anyone with doubts to ride green to be safe. Then both pre-shows again warned guests about the spinning and intense nature of the ride. For almost a decade, the orange and green side showed the same ride film. But in 2017, after a refurbishment, the green mission was given its own unique film. Whereas orange always has shown a voyage to Mars, green became a mission around Earth's orbit. This gave those who were able to experience orange incentive to try the green side as well. Mission Space usually has a decent wait. Most days, it'll hover around the 20 to 30 minute mark, but it can peak around the 45 to 60 minute mark in the late morning early afternoon. Orange usually has a longer wait than green. The queue line does have some fun visuals, including a massive space wheel that was originally from Horizons. It used to revolve, but I haven't seen it spin in years. If you want to avoid a wait, there are two options. The free method is to hit the attraction in the first two or last two hours of the day. It usually is a short wait during those times. The paid method is to grab a lightning lane, which will bring you to the pre-shows almost immediately. The first pre-show introduces the overall mission. This used to be introduced by Gary Sinise, but it was changed to Gina Torres during the ride's 2017 refurbishment. The second pre-show assigns riders their roles. You can either be navigator, pilot, commander, or engineer. While this very much matters in Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run because you can actually influence the ride experience, 
It's more or less a formality on Mission Space. You don't actually control the ride experience in this one. Each centrifuge has 10 capsules. Each capsule seats 4 riders. These capsules are super tight. If you are claustrophobic, you'll probably want to skip this one. Once seated, you're secured by an over-the-shoulder harness. In front of you, you'll see a small television monitor and a ton of buttons. The amount of detail that went into recreating a cockpit is incredible. On the orange side, the experience starts by blasting you into space. Liftoff is the most intense part of the ride in my opinion. As the rocket rises upwards, the centrifuge starts spinning faster and faster. You're plastered against the seat back, and you'll even feel your cheeks get pushed backwards. Mission Space only pulls 2.5 Gs, which doesn't sound like too much because a lot of roller coasters go higher. However, most coasters only induce positive Gs for a few seconds at a time. Mission Space sustains those Gs for a very long time. The rise roughly 4 minutes in duration, and you're subjected to those Gs for much of the experience. Once in space, you'll be given commands. Specific buttons will light up. You're welcome to press them, but if not, Autopilot will do it for you. They're just for show, but they at least get you into the experience and immerse you. The mission then has you slingshot around the moon and enter into a brief period of hypersleep. When you awaken, you navigate through a meteor storm and have a turbulent landing onto Mars. During this portion, you're encouraged to use the joystick to steer, but as with the buttons, it doesn't actually change the experience, it's just for fun, but you'll definitely feel the cabin move up and down and side to side during this portion of the ride. Now I absolutely want to praise this ride for the audio. The narration helps drive the story, the audio cues are perfect, and the use of music is subtle but strong. It really enhances the immersion. However, I do need to criticize the visuals. I don't think they look very good. You're looking at this little television monitor and I think I have better resolution on my computer screens back home. The picture just isn't as clear as I expect from a Disney ride built since the turn of the millennium. And I think the visual quality and setup contributes to why this ride is so nauseating. On the green side, the mission also starts with liftoff, but you won't experience any g-forces during this section because the centrifuge isn't spinning. You're basically just watching a movie at this point. You then orbit around Earth and steer your way through a thunderstorm as you land back down on ground. Your capsule will move left and right and up and down like orange during this sequence, but that motion isn't accompanied by the positive G's. When you exit the attraction, you're sent through the advanced training lab. This is a series of attractions targeted towards kids. You have some games, plus a play structure. So what would I rate Mission Space? I would give this attraction a 6 out of 10. This is a solid ride. As a thrill seeker, I'm genuinely impressed by the sustained positive G's this ride induces on the orange side. That is particularly true during the liftoff sequence. I just wish the on-screen visuals were better. That is one of the most important things of any simulator, yet this is where this one struggles. That's the one thing holding Mission Space back for me from being a truly great attraction. So those are my thoughts on Mission Space at Epcot. What are your thoughts on the space simulator? Do you prefer orange or green? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.